Okay, so let us uh, take a very quick review of what we did last time. So, we looked at this autocorrelation function and in autocorrelation we also found out how to find out autocorrelation from sample, um, sample autocorrelation function and from sample autocorrelation function we could estimate whether the random variables which are separated in time in the same time series okay in the same random process are they correlated so this is a normalized as you can see it's a normalized function uh, you normalize it with uh, covariance at zero and so the maximum value of the autocorrelation function is always one you can never get it is equal to one at lag zero okay and at all other lags typically it, it is less than one it can be it can be uh, negative it can be positive but uh, maximum value cannot exceed one okay uh, now the question that we asked was is this correlation small enough to be neglected because even for a white noise process when you take a specific realization and compute autocorrelation you will never get equal to zero so you have to take a call and something that is close to zero and for that we found out confidence interval the idea for that was um, the way it was done was making use of the fact that the parameter estimate uh, are themselves random variables the estimates of autocorrelation because we are generating them for the samples okay so estimates this rho hat v tau themselves are random variables and you can show that their distribution is zero mean uh, with uh, variance one by root n for large samples and uh, the distribution is Gaussian. So from that we were able to take uh, come up with a confidence interval and now I am not going to explain the concept of confidence interval you have to go back and revise this is taught at some point in undergraduate. Uh, so I have just shown here one calculation for 99 percent confidence interval if you take 200 samples uh, and then how will you get estimate of this confidence interval. So typically 99 percent confidence interval or 95 percent confidence interval is used uh, MATLAB I will demonstrate the MATLAB program it will typically give you 99 percent confidence interval and I have shown here uh, for uh, a white noise um, you know how do I compute uh, this bounds I have taken a white noise which is Gaussian variance one uh, you know mean zero taken 200 samples in MATLAB and found out uh, a realization for that realization I want to see if there is autocorrelation and autocorrelation as we have seen here it does not come out to be exactly equal to zero it comes close to zero and to take a call that it is close to zero I have to use this confidence interval everything that is within the confidence interval is negligible I do not have to uh, so this is white noise why it is white noise because all these autocorrelation values are small small in the sense that they are within the confidence bounds okay so uh, you can view this sequence as you know white noise sequence then I just showed you an example from my lab this is experimental data um, sensor kept in a beaker uh, for water at room temperature and then the data which I get is all over you know it is difficult to find out what is the true value and you can appreciate that actual temperature in the beaker is not changing it is constant okay so this is just a histogram of errors what I have done is I have taken mean value subtracted it from each observation and I got the errors in the measurement suppose we take mean as the estimate okay now you can estimate you can you can appreciate why the estimate of the mean is a random variable if I take some more samples I will get a different mean I will not get the same mean okay or uh, if I take you know if I divide this into two parts 100 and 100 I think there are 100 points if I take first 50 I will get another mean each one of them is an estimate and that estimate only when you take all possible realizations you will get the true value okay otherwise what you get is an estimate okay and then that estimate estimate itself is a random variable that estimate has a distribution and then you can talk of confidence interval and so on okay 
so now uh, question is is this measurement sequence is the noise error in the measurement is it a white noise okay now same thing i have done i have found out uh, confidence interval and you can see that uh, autocorrelation function is you know all these values which you get for lag z lag 1 lag 2 lag 3 up to 20 lags it is within the confidence bounds so this is practically a white noise okay so uh, if you take more and more values this estimates will become sharper and sharper and will go closer and closer to zero if i were to take 1000 samples or 2000 samples and we'll actually analytically come to that that why you should take uh, more samples anyway this is i have just fitted a distribution into that data which i got I, this is another data which i had shown you the temperature uh, global temperature uh, data which is uh, yearly global te temperature average data i wanted to know whether uh, there is a autocorrelation in this series which means what is happening now is it related to what has happened in the past and this simple autocorrelation estimation shows that almost uh, there is a autocorrelation for past 30 years what has happened now is a cumulative function of what is happening over the last 30 years it's not just so so there is a lot of memory into the into the system okay now how to uncover and get a model we'll see we'll come to that but uh, at least we know that this is not a white noise okay my bounds here are given here it's point it comes out to be uh, some point two something so it's it's far away from the white noise okay when it is not white we call it as a colored noise why we call it colored i'll come to that or why we call call white noise as white noise this is the speech data okay again you can see there is a correlation between what is happening at one time instant and what is happening uh, with some lag that is something in the past lag means in the past okay so the data is autocorrelated there is a relationship within the data okay so uh, the sound signal is not a white noise if it was a white noise you will not make out any uh, you know it's a correlated uh, signal that uh, without even knowing signal processing you can appreciate that a white noise will be just uh, what you probably hear uh, when you switch on the radio you hear that you know crrr noise which probably is uh, sound realization of the white noise uh, now the next question that i want to ask is if i have two different sequences are they correlated okay if there are two uh, different time series what is what is the way to do that that is to cross correlation okay so again i can compute sample cross correlation sample cross correlation is using data you have data for one series you have data for the other series and then you want to compute uh, cross correlation for uh, then uh, we normally develop this normalized measure which is divided by uh, you know uh, variance of each one of them okay so if you see here this is uh, series b this is series w okay you normalize this uh, cross correlation cross covariance using these two uh, signal variances that is normalization because it's easier to view the signal in uh, again you can show that uh, cross correlation can never exceed plus or minus 1 so that is a fundamental result and i am not going to prove this you will have to uh, i mean this is just a you know beginners introduction to this vast area the question again you can ask is how do you judge whether cross correlation is small enough see i have to make a call on whether two series are correlated with each other or not is this a cause and is this a effect i want to i want to know that now again you have to develop a confidence interval and same result holds that uh, uh, each of these correlation function is uh, you can view it as a, uh, a random variable with distribution uh, which is gaussian zero mean and one by root n for a white noise if both of them are white noise you will get uh, and so what you actually do is that you do not know what is it for the colored noise okay you know what is it for the white noise so you can you can actually find out whether this is a white noise or not okay so 
by using this co this confidence interval you can say that this is not a white noise okay both of them are not white there is some correlation so again we uh, this is a uh, some uh, data taken from the net actually it comes uh, if you see this one reference i have given is shumway and stoffer at the end of the uh, notes shumway and stoffer actually have given this data and on their uh, book page of Uh, so this is some index which actually is a measure of air pressure changes in air pressure related to sea surface temperature in the central pacific now we probably have heard this el nino effect that is central pacific region keeps warming with a cycle of 3 to 7 years and then that is blamed for many things you know suddenly you see in newspaper that this year monsoon is not good because this el nino is active or something like that so uh, there is uh, also a data about fish population in central uh, pacific region uh, collected by some uh, uh, government department and this is scale data it doesn't tell you exactly numbers it gives you between 0 and 100 there is some benchmark taken which is 100 and uh, uh, so uh, the question is warming of or the changes in the pressure and temperature in the pacific region does it have any correlation with the fish population okay so uh, the way to do this is to find out cross correlation between these two series okay now these are the two series this is first one is the southern oscillation index and the other one is this is a data taken from 1950 to 1985 uh, and the second one is also 1950 to 1985 this is monthly data okay fish population every month okay uh, i i don't know how they have done scaling this is scaled data but right now we can look at it as a scaled data available to you they, they may not want to publish the true numbers okay uh, so typically many times data when it is made available it is made available as scaled scaled data so zero may not mean the fish become zero uh, it might mean it becomes low and then there is some high okay so now if i look at auto correlation see this is a periodic data and you want to see what is the repeating you know uh, what what is correlated with what in time within the data itself so first i am going to look at soi and i'm also i'm going to look at the southern oscillation index and also the fish population data you can see that the first one shows a nice periodic behavior okay with a period of 12 so there is a positive correlation with uh, for uh, time points which are 12 uh, months apart and there is a negative correlation between time points which are 6 months apart so this is these two points are 6 months apart they are negatively correlated while these two points are positively correlated that 12 months apart okay so that is what that is what so what is happening now Uh, has a correlation with what will happen after 12 months okay or vice versa what is happening now is correlated to what happened 12 months back okay so uh, more detailed models you have to use something else we'll come to that this at least tells you that truth there is a auto correlation within the data okay this is not a white noise this is not uh, uh, complete uh, kachra in the data it, it has some signal the same thing is true about the fish population data Uh, again it shows the periodicity the periodicity is slightly different than uh, there seems to be uh, some time lag between the two okay so now if you take cross correlation the cross correlation peaks at every 6 months interval which shows that uh, the index measured at time 6 months back is related to the fish population now okay so if index is changing so you know this i can use to do some predictions okay i can use this idea to or i, I can use to develop a prediction model for this the way to do it is using transfer function models that we will learn later but right now we are just analyzing the two series and saying that there is some correlation there is some correlation between the fish population and this index okay and it seems to be lagged by 6 months that's all we know from this correlation analysis right now okay what is this exact correlation how to predict 
okay uh, what will happen see you are interested in knowing what is going to be the fish population after 6 months uh, because it some industry might depend on it so how to develop prediction models will come to that little later okay but this at least tells you that there is prima facie case for building a model that relates index with the fish population okay if this this thing had come everything within these red bounds here everything had come within the red bounds then we do not know we, we cannot say whether there is correlation or not and then we cannot develop a model between these two variables okay see these are black box models you know seemingly uh, you know the uh, fish population and temperature are you know we don't know the physics that correlates this with the fish population we are not getting into the physics we are going to develop a black box model which just correlates you know soi with fish population okay and uh, uh, this model is and these kind of models we keep developing for control all the time okay a transfer function models that we are going to develop are going to be this kind okay we know that this is a cause and this is the effect what is the difference equation that relates the two that question we'll ask later okay let's get back to our data that we were looking at okay this was a uh, model for the two tank system which we developed output error model we developed and then we had this question why did we start all this business of stochastic processes because we got this we got this series okay this was vk vk was everything that is not explained by inputs okay we got a model this blue uh is the model and plus 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 are the data points and there is a difference and the difference is plotted here with this blue line okay and then we wanted to check whether there is any signal left or there is some something relevant left in this okay so what is to be done first check whether autocorrelated is this autocorrelated that is the first question i should ask okay the second question i can ask is that see this model which i have developed is between y and u suppose some effect of u is left in this some effect of u is left in the residuals okay then the residual and u will be correlated my order i have chosen second order model second order could be wrong maybe i should go for third order some effect is not getting captured and that signal is left into this i want to extract everything that is okay so i am going to do two things one is auto correlation auto correlation for vk and cross correlation cross correlation between input u and vk okay everyone is clear about this okay so this is what you get if you use a matlab as a function uh, called auto correlation function and you can use that acf uh at uh, after i finish this set of lectures i'll give you a demo of the toolbox i think partly professor bharti has given you some demo but i'll complete that uh, task um well all the tools that we are talking about are there in matlab or scilab if you don't have matlab you can use scilab in a public domain tool all the tools are available you should know how to use them that is the main thing you should know the fundamentals the theory and the theory is fairly complex you should try to develop an understanding otherwise you know you end up using it uh, without uh, knowing what is inside and then there is a big problem so the question is uh, is there something in this vk now you can see here clearly this signal is auto correlated there is a very strong auto correlation with the past in fact even with last 20 samples it is not over it might be there for last many many samples so there is auto correlation which is strong positive auto correlation cross correlation doesn't seem to be there so second order model seems to be okay i am not going to gain too much by going to third order model okay how is i mean the increasing the order of this model is helping you i mean in the case of the cross correlation suppose the cross correlation is very high. i'll i'll come to an example where actually i will choose a second order model and it will not be sufficient you will see cross correlation between residuals and u and then you will say my model order is wrong i'll come to the example in this case somehow it has worked out second order see we started by saying i wanted to develop a second order model a third order model a fourth order model i will first develop the simplest model second order model if it works why should i go to the third order okay well again i am going to give you a very very sketchy introduction to 
fairly complex idea of spectrum of a signal ok. Um, it is fine in this course if you just get some kind of a working knowledge and not deep understanding, uh, deeper, deeper understanding of this will take time. Uh, so, um, well we are going to define what is called as the power spectrum of the signal VK, ok. Power spectrum is defined as a function of frequency omega, ok. Right now just accept this, ok and try to get working, working idea as to because if I give a signal to MATLAB it will give me spectrum, try to understand how to interpret the spectrum, ok. Uh, how it is a transform and then the way it works, those of you who are electrical engineers and have worked with signal conditioning, they would be comfortable with this spectrum idea. So, uh, others who are from mechanical chemical might find it a little difficult. But uh, doing time series analysis and modeling, we cannot escape this idea of spectrum. So, we define power spectrum of a signal as, uh, see look here, this is infinite sum going from tau minus infinity to infinity. R V tau, these R V tau are nothing but autocorrelations, ok, within the signal and this is e to the power minus j omega t, ok. So, this is actually a Fourier transform, it actually represents a Fourier transform of the autocovariance function, ok. That is the interpretation of this. It helps you to transform, you to view the signal in terms of the, uh, you know, signal power as a function of frequency. We are actually transforming from time domain to frequency domain. Why we do, why we do uh, Nyquist plot and you know because we can get a different perspective of the signals or the system in frequency domain and you can do some analysis in the frequency domain, ok. So, here given a signal, ok, what is the, see we saw this signal here, this signal, you know. I would like to know at different frequencies what is the power of the, what is the, you know, um, what is power of the signal at different frequencies, ok. What is the, is, is this, is this, does this make sense, power of the signal at different frequencies? Uh, frequency as in uh, the way you define frequency? Uh, per month, per month not per second, it will be per month, yeah, it will be per month. Uh, so, I can take a transform uh, and then you can define an inverse transform. Right now, you know, uh, let us keep the transform uh, understanding at this one slide and move on to interpreting the transform, ok. If I show you transform of a certain signals, then uh, you will get some idea. Uh, so, the physical interpretation is analogy I can give you is to uh, probability density function. What happens in probability density function? How do you find out probability between two points? You are given a density, you take an integral between those two points and you will get probability of an event occurring between those two points, right. The same thing is here. If you are given spec a power spectrum density, you can take an integral between band omega 1 and omega 2, you can find out power of the signal in that particular, see if you give me a raw signal, I am not able to find out, I am not able to analyze the frequency content of that signal, what range of frequencies exist, right. This is of interest from a, uh, you know, modeler point of view that what is the range of frequency in which. Uh, the area under the spectral density band represents the signal power in the certain frequency band and total area is proportional to the variance of the signal. Ok. This crude interpretation right now, a simple interpretation right now is what you try to keep in mind and we move on from this. So, let us look at the white noise spectrum, ok. What will be the white noise spectrum? See what is the variance of white noise? What is autocorrelation auto function of white noise? It is sigma square at lag 0 and it is 0 at all other lags, ok. So, power spectrum of a white noise, it turns out to be just sigma square by 2 pi, ok. Because it is 0 at all other lags, it is 0 only at 0, it is non-zero only at 0 lag, it is, so you are summing from minus infinity to infinity, 
you will get only this particular term ok. So, actually power spectrum of white noise is constant ok. Um, so, that is the reason why we call uh, it has all frequencies white noise is a signal which has all the frequencies present ok. When you the analogy is with the white white light see white light has all the frequencies present what is what is there in the colored light light if you knock off some frequencies ok you will get colored colored light ok. So, uh, how do you get a colored stochastic signal you take a white noise pass it through a filter what does a what do you do in when you create a, a, say a green light from a white light what do you do you have a filter ok you have a filter you pass white light through the filter you will get the green light on the other side ok. Here you take white noise signal pass it through a difference equation which will act as a filter uh, you know that a difference equation or a differential equation can be viewed as a low pass filter high pass filter you have you have seen this when you studied your first course in control right when you draw a uh, Bode plot right you know that uh, this you know uh, a first order transfer function will be like a low pass filter ok and then a PID controller is like all pass filter and depending upon how you choose D. So, uh, uh, you have uh, uh, you know the same way here this is this is the uh, I am plotting here the spectrum of white noise ok. Spectrum of white noise can be estimated from data if you give data to MATLAB and ask to compute spectrum it will compute spectrum and plot it for you. You can see that white noise uh, ideal spectrum should be this ok I have taken a white noise with variance 1 ok. So, the ideal spectrum should be this is plotted on the log log plot ok. So, uh, so it is showing you uh, 0 here and uh, estimate is hovering around 1 see this blue line is the estimate of the spectrum ok it is hovering around 1 ok. So, the realization which I got is almost like a white noise because it has all the frequencies it has power at all the frequencies see this is amplitude this is power and this is frequency frequency is between 0 to 1 ok and you will wonder what is this 1 in in discrete time systems you always uh, plot uh, between 0 to 1 where 1 is the normalized frequency ok and it is normalized with respect to this uh, omega n omega n is called as a Nyquist frequency and uh, this is defined as pi by t ok t here is the sampling period ok. So, here this 1 means frequency 2 pi by omega divided by pi by t ok it is normalized with this reference to it is omega by omega n what is omega n pi by t ok. So, the spectrum if you ask MATLAB to plot spectrum it will always give you this normalized frequency spectrum ok and this tells you what is the what is the power at different frequencies. If I show you a colored noise signal then you will realize that what is the difference is is just keep this figure in mind ok. Sir, yeah. if there are frequencies beyond this are insignificant or something? No, the uh, in, disc, in digital uh, control these uh, uh, spectrum will repeat ok since it repeats we only plot the first uh, normalization comes I think in that integral let me go back and check. Now, this is power spectrum of auto regressive process I have created an auto regressive process V k is equal to 0.5 V k minus 1 and E k is a white noise ok whatever white noise I took here same white noise I have used here it is 0 mean white noise with sigma square equal to 1 ok and this is the auto regressive process this is like a first order filter first order difference equation it is a low pass filter it only allows low frequencies to pass through and higher frequencies are the the signal at higher frequencies is cut off ok. You can see here in the power spectrum that the the spectrum is high at low frequencies spectrum becomes small at high frequencies 
okay the spectrum becomes small at high frequency so this is this is how a colored noise will look as against the white noise white noise has all the all the frequencies okay has almost equal power at all the frequencies whereas the colored noise has high power at some frequencies low power at some frequencies so analogy is with uh this terminology i have to introduce because we keep using this okay we are not again as i said in the in this course we are not going to uh, uh, by do hand calculation of a spectrum but you know th this is a difficult idea and then we have to uh, at least have some idea of what is a spectrum okay um well i'm trying to compress a huge course into a few lectures and that's why i have to go a little fast well uh, power spectrum you know you can uh, think about uh, finding out a power spectrum for the speech signal at which frequencies there is more power which frequencies there is low power okay uh, maybe when you are transmitting the signal you can decide to transmit only that part which is at uh, you know which has significant power you can knock off the part which has low power and then you will get almost uh the signal that you know that you hear so that is that is an important aspect in signal processing and so right now just uh, get this qualitative understanding of white noise and colored noise that's enough we'll move on to now modeling so uh this brings uh to end the prelude or background material which i wanted to teach on stochastic processes okay it is not possible that those 2 3 hours of lectures will give you understanding uh, of uh, this area for me personally it has taken years to understand what each thing means okay so uh, but then you know you can start using these terms you can start uh, uh, using matlab programs keeping these slides at in the background slowly we learn uh, we should not too much worry about uh, you know in the beginning uh, you do not get full meaning of uh, what it is uh, you should have attitude of a child where a child learns a language without uh, being scared of he'll use uh, some seven year child will come and say what is your responsibility he doesn't understand what is the meaning of responsibility but he'll use the word anyway so uh, you start using the words and slowly the meaning will percolate okay so now after this abstract background which is needed uh, language which is which i need now i am going to get into the practical problem so now i want to develop a model we started with this right uh, y is equal to gq into uk plus vk we developed an output error model we never attempted to model vk okay now i want to model vk using this idea of stochastic processes auto correlation cross correlation business okay so this is going to be my deterministic component okay deterministic in the sense u is known to me okay everything that is not known to me will be uh, you know in this residue okay so this residue will contain two things unmeasured disturbances measurement noise in fact it will also have approximation errors because the real process will not be linear you are developing a linear model so this is combination of everything that is not known not known to you okay now information even though you are not measuring the disturbances its effect is present in y right its effect is present in y and if you develop this kind of a model its effect is present in v we saw that vk is auto correlated so now there is a hope to uncover a model from from this vk okay uh so what is an obvious choice of structure okay an obvious choice of structure is yk is some function of past u and also past y because where is the information about disturbances hidden it's there in y itself right effect of disturbances is present in y so i want to use that information develop a model uncover it and then use it for control okay now i have this little term coming here ek okay 
I am going to develop this model f is some function initially I will take linear functions and in this course we are going to stick to linear functions. Uh, Nonlinear functions would be a part of an advanced course not really in this course. When will I know my model is correct? I will stop only when this E k is a white noise. Why white noise? In the white noise there is no autocorrelation. White noise is like complete kachra. Okay, it is complete dirt, you can throw it, there is nothing left, no signal left in white noise. Okay, so, I will develop this model till E k becomes a white noise. I okay, will do this for a particular case and I will show you that you know you have to go on increasing the model order till E k becomes white noise. Okay, we will see one this specific case. I am going to go back to the same data, I am going to call this. Uh, okay. Uh, I can propose a linear model which is of this form. Can everyone see this model? Okay. It says that y k is a function of a 1 y k minus 1 linear difference equation model, simple linear difference equation model. Okay. This is different from output error model. Why it is different? In output error model you had here x k, x k minus 1 we said that y k is x k plus v k. Here I am directly using y k. I am saying current measurement, okay. Output error model we had two things we had x k and let me just go back here and re remind you, okay. See my model output error model, my output error model was x k is equal to. Uh, minus a 1 x k minus 1 plus b 1 u k minus 1 and y k is equal to x k plus v k. Now, this model is fundamentally different from writing y k as minus a 1 or let us call it alpha 1 y k minus 1 plus b 1 or beta 1 u k minus 1. These two models are fundamentally different because in one case, in one case we are working with x which is effect of u alone okay. and in this case we are working with y directly, y is measured okay. x can never be measured okay. x is a combined effect of v k and uh, uh, sorry y is a combined effect of x k and v k ok, y is a combined effect of x k and v k, y can be measured. So, this model is fundamentally different, they look similar but there is a big big difference ok, ok. Now, how many, how many you know here you see that I am taking y k minus 1, y k minus 2, y k minus 3, how many such past values I should take, yeah. No, no. So, I want to develop this model in such a way that E of k will become white noise. I do not know what order to choose. No, no, but it, it depends upon how to choose the model order. It is not obvious that always becomes white noise. I will give you an example. Okay. So, how many past outputs I should include? Okay. Now, here because you are modeling noise together with deterministic component, you do not know how many past y's are important. What is the autocorrelation? We do not know right now. Okay. So, how much, how many past we should include? We will choose model order in such a way that E k becomes a white noise. Okay. So, now I will show you an exercise in which I will start with model order 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You see that till you go to 6th model order, you do not get white noise. Okay. That is because now you are trying to capture deterministic dynamics together with stochastic dynamics. Both are captured together. Okay. How do you develop this model? Okay. Let us first understand uh, how to develop this model given the data. This model development is very, very easy. You can even write a simple program in MATLAB to do this. Have you done linear least squares? Well, we have done in our 
our course on numerical methods, but uh, others probably have done least squares method at some point. If you are not done, I am going to repeat it, I am going to do it here in the notes. So, uh, hope you have taken print out of the new notes because I have done lot of rearrangement. Uh, Let us look at a second order model, okay. What, what is it there with me? I have data of y, I have data of y with me, I have data of u with me, okay. So, I have collected y data and u data, perturbation data. Let us see how to develop a second order model, okay. Now, for this tank system, we know that there is a unit time delay, so that I have included here. So, my model becomes y k is a 1 into y k minus 1, previous value of the measurement, previous 2 values previous and then u k minus 2 and u k minus 3 that is because of 1 unit time delay in addition to the basic time delay. So, this is my model, okay, second order model. I want to estimate a 1, a 2, b 1, b 2 from data. I have data for y and u, okay. Great thing about this model is that y is known, u is known. Estimating a1, a2, b1, b2 is going to be very, very easy. How many, how many parameters are there? Four parameters, okay. Four unknowns. How many equations you need? Four equations? What, how many unknowns are there in this? Four unknowns really or five unknowns? Which is the fifth unknown? E k. You do not know what is E k. So, there is a trouble. You cannot uh, just use four equations, okay. So, now let us start writing. Let us start writing the equation. My first equation will be y 3. I have started data from, I have data which is indexed from u 0, u 1, u 2, u 3, y 0, y 1, y 2, y 3, okay. So, my first equation that I can write is for time 3. Do you agree with this? Okay, because my data in u, it starts with u 0. I, I do not have data for u minus 1, there is some 0 point. So, my first equation is going to be this, okay. There are unknowns a 1, a 2, b 1, b 2, e 3. These are 5 unknowns, okay. My next equation is y 4, okay. This has a 1, a 2, b 1, b 2, but e 4 has cropped up, okay. And likewise, if I go on writing these equations, you know, how many equations I will get? I have n capital N data points, I will get, uh, sorry, I have capital N plus 1 data point because 0, th 0 is considered. So, I will get n minus 3, n minus 3 equations you will get. How many unknowns are there? No, all these are unknowns. All these are unknowns. So, how many unknowns are there? n minus 3 plus 4. There are n minus 3 equations and there are n minus 3 plus 4 unknowns. So, number of unknowns is much more or is 4 unknowns are more than the number of equations, okay. So, you have to do some trick to come up with a solution, okay. Those are estimates, no? Because, no, no. Uh, what you say is right. I think there is a typo here. Moment I put in E, it this should not be y hat, this should be y4. I agree. There is a typo here. It should be y4 and it should be uh, so it should be y4, not y hat 4. If I remove E, it will be y hat. Yeah, thanks for the uh, catching the error. Okay, now what I have done is I have put these equations into matrix form. Some of you have done least squares, this form would be familiar, okay. Uh, I have just put this uh, set of equations into standard matrix form. Y here, capital Y here is a vector of all Y's stacked, okay. This is a matrix. The first row here will be uh, Y1, uh, oh, it should be Y2, Y1. Uh, so, there is a, again a slight typo here. It should be Y2, Y1. If you go back here, it should be Y2, Y1, U1, U0, okay. So, I will correct this. Uh, just correct it on your notes right now. It should be Y2, Y1. Um, so, uh, so you have, you get this? It should be Y2, Y1, not, uh, not, uh, okay. 
So I have these four unknowns a1, a2, a3, a4. I have these additional unknowns e3 to en. Okay, I have these additional unknowns, and all of them have to be determined. Okay, I'm going to write this as a one matrix equation. Matrix y, okay, is equal to this omega matrix into theta plus e. E is vector of all errors. Okay. Now I want to estimate theta. Okay. Eventually, I also want to estimate e, but e are the errors, right? E are the errors. So I am going to estimate theta such that some of the square of errors is minimized. Least square estimation, right? All of you are aware of least square estimation. Okay. So this is a linear in parameter model. It's a very nice model, and uh, this model I can uh, estimate parameters. Analytically, I can solve the optimization problem analytically. How to solve the optimization problem? There is an error. Two and three it should be. Two and three. Yeah, I will correct this. This matrix is. Yeah, yeah. This matrix that one index needs to be corrected. Yeah, if you have it print out, you just correct it right now. I will put a corrected version online. Uh, now, least square estimation problem. What I want to do is, I want to estimate some of the square of errors, which turns out to be nothing but e transpose e here. Okay, uh, and then you know e transpose e is nothing but y minus omega theta transpose y minus omega. This problem can be solved analytically. Um, what is the necessary condition for optimality? The derivative of the objective function. Objective function is sum of the square of errors. That should be equal to zero. Okay. So I am finding out this this small psi here is my objective function e transpose e. I am setting derivatives of this with respect to theta. Theta is nothing but a1, a2, b1, b2. Zero. This solution can be found analytically. Uh, so, if you actually this is the intermediate step, you take uh, the gradient and set it equal to 0. If you set it equal to 0, you get this least square estimate. Okay. Uh, this particular uh, estimate is the least square estimate of a1, a2, b1, b2, okay, obtained from the data which you have collected. Okay. Uh, well, what is the sufficient condition for optimality? The second derivative should be positive definite, Hessian should be positive definite. If I find out the Hessian, it turns out to be this matrix omega transpose omega. This matrix is it always positive definite? Why? If this matrix is it has rank equal to 4. In this particular case, it will always be positive definite. Think about it. This uh, side omega transpose omega will always be a positive definite matrix. So, which means you have got the global minimum in this particular case. In fact, you reach the global minimum analytically. ARX model, what we call it as ARX model, is very, very easy to compute. Okay. So, if I do this on this data which I have from the full tank, I will get this model. I will get this model parameters. Okay. Now, now the question comes is that I got this model, once I got this model, see I can go back and use the definition of E to be y minus omega theta, I can substitute here d square estimate, I can get an estimate of E, find out whether it is a white noise or not. If it is not a white noise, my model is not correct, I should go back and change the order. Okay. So that is my next thing which I am going to do. So I got this model, okay. I got these estimates of the model, and look at the model. Model looks very good, you know. See, I'll just we'll just go back and uh, check here. I'll just just suppose this with the OE model that we got. OE model, VK was like this, right? You are going from zero to point one five. Now and then there was a gap between the prediction and measurement, okay. Come back here, second order ARX model, 
wow okay it's just the model and the predictions and the measurements are sitting on the top of each other you cannot see the difference can you see here blue line and plus plus you cannot see the difference the error is very very small okay now the question is is this a white noise visually it looks like a white noise unfortunately it is not a white noise okay it turns out that this is not a white noise so my model residuals uh, so this on if you just look at the two diagrams it's better than the oe model you know it has closed that small gap which existed okay so first check is i'll find out the residuals residuals are y measured minus omega matrix into estimate okay which is same as y minus y hat what is y hat y estimated okay then i check for autocorrelation function if autocorrelation function shows that it is not a white noise my model is not good i have to change the model okay uh, then what should i check cross correlation between u and ek okay so i want to check cross correlation between u and ek this is it this is the autocorrelation function you can see here this this autocorrelation value peaks out so this is not a white noise here yeah, see the autocorrelation function this guy here is outside the bound so there is a there is a autocorrelation negative autocorrelation between ek and ek minus 1 which means ek is not a white noise okay which means ek is not a white noise what about cross correlation ek and uk are correlated so some effect of uk is still left in ek your model residues is not completely white you cannot accept this model even though visually it looks very good you know the match looks very good but i i do not accept this model okay so what i am going to do is i am going to go on developing the models so this is i have developed a model which is second order third order fourth order fifth order sixth order and i have just plotted here some of the square of errors okay you can see that the objective function value of the objective function so on the square of errors go on decreasing at once i if i develop a model of order 6 6 lakhs yk minus 1 yk minus 2 yk minus 3 up to yk minus 6 uk minus 1 uk minus 2 up to uk minus 6 if i develop this model up to order 6 then the noise becomes white then i have removed everything from the from the residuals okay uh so here you can see that it is almost white okay actually you should go on developing a model with higher and higher order but there are some issues i'll talk about those issues but uh it's not exactly white but it's almost white there is there seems to be some small correlation left with yk and ek uh, sorry uk and ek uh but i am willing to live with this model yeah what will error will increase no there, there are issues why uh, why can't we go on developing a model of higher and higher order i am going to talk about those issues now there are fundamental issues as to so now there is a problem you know this seems to give me a model in which the gap is closed and some of the noise is modeled how the noise is modeled i will come to that i will come to that a little later but before that i want to analyze the parameters estimates of the parameters okay and then uh, i want to give you some insights into uh, the behavior of the estimated model so arx model is a very popular model in the industry it is very very often used okay the trouble is you have to get a good arx model you have to use large number of parameters and why large number of parameters is a trouble okay i'll come to that now ha huh, that is matlab uh, which means 6 lag in u 6 lags in y and 2 is a time delay time delay of 2 we started with uk minus 2 no so default time delay for any model is 1 here there is one more lag so 2 so this actually arx 662 is matlab command which i have uh, used here okay okay 
so now now this ek here is a white noise okay there is no autocorrelation in this ek almost okay and there is no much correlation left between ek and uk so i can accept this model if you if you if you want you can go a little further seventh order i have stopped at sixth order okay maybe you can go up to eighth order but beyond that okay so these are my model coefficients now model here consists of two things one is this a polynomial b polynomial this matlab will pop up you know you just say arx i think professor bhartiya showed you this right using this arx model you don't remember now because probably you, the theory was not covered okay so matlab will pop up this model give data it will pop up this model okay it's, it's as uh, uh, easy as that but here the model consists of two things one is this transfer function a and b okay it also tells you about this ek okay and soon i will show that this ek is also as important to us as this model okay so i have also listed here if you notice i have listed here uh, mean of ek is almost zero not exactly zero close to zero 10 to the power minus 3 okay and this is the variance so this is like a zero mean noise white noise almost white noise and i know its variance i can estimate its variance from ek e, uh, e transpose e uh, square root of that divided by n that formula we can use and get variance of this signal okay so it's practically a zero mean white noise signal and what is it what is the role that this signal is playing in terms of uh, you know uh, noise modeling okay i think let me go to that first and then come back to this uh, logically i'll skip few slides and then come back to these slides okay so my arx model is like this is everyone with me on this my arx model is my arx model is like this okay where i i made sure that ek is a white noise okay we developed the sixth order model which means we used uk minus 1 uk minus 2 up to uk minus 6 yk minus 1 yk minus 2 up to yk minus 6 and we got those polynomials in q aq bq you got right i just showed you the data for this particular data which we have okay now i'm going to rewrite this model like this is there any doubt with what i have done just check can you see this slide okay is is this clear what i have done i have just taken q transform okay and then written it as a transfer function okay yk what is this part this is my g g u this is my g u okay this is my model for noise earlier i had written v k here okay earlier i had written v k now i am writing 1 upon a a is the polynomial that you got from here right into e k okay so this quantity 1 upon aq into ek is actually my noise model okay this is my noise model so i have modeled a noise i have modeled a noise as a transfer function which is driven by a white noise do you see this if i write it if i write this model like this my noise here this is my noise my noise here is actually modeled as ek passing through 1 upon aq okay this is my noise model so this is my vk okay what we made sure was ek is a white noise sequence you agree with me okay so implicitly without realizing we have constructed a noise model here which can be 
distilled out only when you go to only when you go to q domain okay when you write it in the shift operator format you can distill out what is the noise model what is the deterministic model this part b q by a q is a deterministic model okay and 1 by a q into e k is a stochastic model earlier we called this as b k okay this is my stochastic model so this is the model for unknown effects unknown components unknown disturbance okay so this model is driven by two inputs what is the first input uk uk is the known signal to you uk is the wall position that you changed okay it is driven by another hypothetical signal called ek ek is not a real signal ek is not a real signal ek is a white noise source is an idealized uh, white noise source which is driving a transfer function okay so let me summarize this like this so my model can be written as two parts okay my model can be written as two parts yk equal to gq into uk what is g effect of deterministic component okay g is my transfer function with respect to the deterministic component what is h for arx model it turns out to be 1 by a for arx model it turns out to be 1 by a okay so this is my this is my this is my noise model okay the noise model is consist of a transfer function and a white noise source white noise source is hypothetical this hypothetical white noise source is driving is is actually driving the we assume or we model that unknown component is as if a white noise is passing through a filter what is this filter 1 upon aq filter is 1 upon aq that is the filter okay so the trick to model unmeasured disturbances is to is to model it as a white noise source which is passing through a difference equation okay that is the basic idea basic idea used in uh, time series modeling this particular idea to crystallize this idea has taken believe me centuries it's not at all so easy to come up with because you know you are trying to model something for which you do not know what real input is you just have its effect present in the data and you still want to uncover a model okay very very difficult so you have construct an hypothetical signal called white noise which is passing through a transfer function which gives you same effect as the unknown disturbances there is no real source called white noise anywhere okay it's a model and it works it works quite well in predicting the un unmeasured disturbances <coughs> yeah uk minus why do i write uk minus k minus d so that uh, delay about delay no no it will represent a value of uk d k minus d instant in the past uk uk minus 1 is one one instant in the past uk minus 2 is two instant in the past ha huh. No, 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 no. The the meaning of writing q minus d here or u k minus d is that a value, a past value of u has effect on uh, what is happening today. See, for example, you know, let's take a uh, a situation where uh, you know, suppose I uh, teach something today. Okay, you understand it after two days. Okay. 
then how will you write a model for that? You will say that what I know today is actually the effect of what was taught two days back. Okay. Not what is being taught today. So what I am teaching today will you will understand after two days because there is a delay of two. Okay. So that is what is being that is what is being quantified here through the time delay, this term D minus D. Okay. So the past what is the meaning of or what is the meaning of delay in the measurement? The delay in the measurement is what you observe now. Okay, actually was something that happened in the past. Okay, is not what is what is the see if there is a delay in the measurement. Okay, so which means the temperature that you see now, okay, is actually what has happened, you know, sometime in the past in the system. That is the meaning of delayed measurement. So both of them are, can be represented through this model. Yeah. Not UK minus one, no. If UK minus one means there is unit delay, only delay of one. Uh. Hmm. Plus D, no. See plus D. Okay, you understand one one basic thing here. See. So this is present. So when I am writing k plus 1, so I am at instant k, k plus 2, k plus 3, these are all in future, okay. So k minus 1, k minus 2, k minus 3, so this is k minus d in general, d samples in the past, okay. I cannot have a model which says, you will never have a model which says that what is happening now is a function of what will happen in future. The delay means what is happening now, see in a discrete time system there is always a unit delay. So if you take a input, if you introduce an input here, its effect can be seen only here. That minimum one delay is always there. Sometimes there is more delay which means what you, what you do here, its effect might be seen here or equivalently what you do here let us say, there is a delay of two. What you do here, its effect is seen here. What you do here, its effect will be seen here. Okay. This is related to this. This is related to this. This is related to you know two in future. Okay. So the delay is always in the past. Okay. If you talk about something into future, future will not have effect on the present. No. Future will not have effect on the present. So. Uh, the past will have effect on the present that that model you can develop future having effect on the present is not something that you can develop so k here just remember whenever we are doing this k is always current time k minus 1 is 1 in the past k minus 2 is 2 in the past am i answering your question or we can talk about it later after the class okay so basically what has happened is that uh, you know we have got a model which is linear in parameter model um, and effect of unmeasured disturbances has got modeled as a transfer function which is driven by white noise. Um, we could obtain the values of this model using linear least squares because ARX model you know Y and U are known. In OE model if you remember you have to do nonlinear optimization X was not known. You had to guess x, you did not know x, you did not know v, you, know, you had all kinds of problems uh, and you did not know parameters. Hmm. No, no, the delay estimation is typically done a priori, there are methods to do delay estimation. Uh, simplest way is you give a step change and see uh, when the output starts changing, you can estimate delay from that, okay. So you have to do lot of uh, studies to uh, estimate delays, it is not that. What is the problem with this model? You need lot of uh, data in the past. So let me uncover this noise model and show you what it is actually. It will turn out to be autoregressive process, okay. Without 
uh, without saying it actually I have actually modeled an autoregressive process. How? I am just multiplying this. Just consider a scenario where u is 0, consider a scenario where u is 0, okay. If u is 0, permanently 0, what remains is only noise, okay. Earlier this noise we had called it vk, so I have chosen to call it vk here, okay. vk is equal to, this is my noise model, vk is equal to uh, 1 by aq into ek. What is this model? It is an autoregressive model. If you just expand this, you get this? If I expand this, what actually I have got is an autoregressive model, okay. So, so now autoregression is able to help me construct a model for, autoregression is a nice thing, it is a stationary process, okay. I can develop a model for a random signal which is fluctuating, okay, which is auto correlated through this autoregressive model, okay. And I was able to get a1, a2, a3, a6, I was able to uncover the coefficients, okay. So now I can talk about that signal just using this model, what actually you are doing, you are representing a stochastic signal which has, you do not know what the source of it is through a model which is a difference equation model, this is a difference equation model, okay. It is driven by a white noise. So this white noise, zero mean white noise with its variance is equally important here. Model consists of a1 to a n plus white noise and its variance. You cannot separate the two, okay. So even though this white noise does not have anything left in it, it is useful. Actually it is used in modeling the noise, okay. Just understand this. Well, I can uh, play with it now. Once I have this model in Q domain, if A Q, you know, if it is, if the poles are inside the unit circle, then you can do a long division and then get this infinite sum and then uh, I can write this model, okay. So what I want to show here is that we talked about two processes, right, moving average process and auto regressive process. I did not introduce them without purpose. I talked about them because they are useful in modeling stochastic signals, okay, very simple models. Now and they are interconvertible, all that I am trying to tell you is that one and the other are interconvertible. See here, if I, if 1 upon A can be expanded as a, you just do long division, okay. You can do polynomial division, 1, one upon, uh, you know, maybe I can give you as an exercise, you can do this division and see. Uh, so I can write 1 upon A Q as uh, 1 plus H Q 1 A plus H 2 Q 2 and so on and then that means V K is some function of past E K alone, okay. This, this, this H here you will see that it will go on reducing in values, H will go to 0, okay, if the poles are inside the unit circle and then you can truncate this series. So another way of constructing a model, another way of constructing a model is moving average process, okay. I can develop an autoregressive model, I can develop an AR model, okay, that is autoregressive model. I can do the MA model, moving average model, okay. These are two different ways of capturing uh, or developing a models for uh, uh, noise models, okay. Uh, well, I can combine these two and develop what is called as ARMA model, I will come to that little later. But is, is everyone clear about the abstraction that I have come up with for noise modeling, okay. Is this transition from here to here clear? I started with this, okay. I said this is my ARX model, ARX model I am going to abstract as a deterministic component and a stochastic component. The stochastic component was 1 upon A. Then I wrote VK as 1 upon Q into Ek and showed you that this is nothing but autoregressive process, autoregressive process by driven by white noise. This signal we have seen earlier, right, this was a, uh, in fact, why is this a colored noise or a white noise? It is a colored noise. I showed you an example of autoregressive process which is colored noise, spectrum was, you know, uh, yeah, it was high at low frequencies. Uh, low at high frequencies, this is a colored noise, 
okay now i have a model for the colored noise obtained directly from data i have a model for the colored noise obtained directly from data and the next thing which i am going to say here is that this is this can be converted to moving average process those two model forms auto regressive and moving average are just interconvertible forms you can go from one form to the other form this form just like you can go from discrete to continuous continuous to discrete same thing holds here okay just a very very quick uh, thing about uh, uh, one problem uh, i was told uh, everyone is having difficulty in solving from going from discrete time system to continuous time system problem number 6 problem number 6 okay some of you are having difficulties uh, i just want to point out one thing here is just look at this phi matrix and a matrix have same eigen vectors this is the clue to the problem and eigen values of phi and eigen values of a are related by e to the power lambda capital t if you know sampling time you can see you start with phi you first find out the eigen vectors then you will get this psi matrix okay you will get psi matrix once you have psi matrix you can write psi psi inverse okay you will also get this matrix e to the power lambda t from this getting lambda matrix is not difficult because the relationship is e to the power lambda i t is this is the relationship that is if lambda is the eigen value e to the power lambda t is the eigen value of of this matrix look at this slide 72 okay slide 72 is the solution for that particular problem and uh the other other part can be uncovered from getting b matrix is yeah look at this equation gamma matrix is nothing but phi minus i into a inverse b so if you know gamma if you know phi if you know i if you know a you can recover b okay just use this so this is slide what uh, 39 and 72 has the clue for problem 